Welcome back to another episode of Today, Today in History. History. I'm Andrew Noah. I'm Jesse Alberts. And I'm Grant Rash. And introducing our new field correspondent, Grant Leppard. And I'm Jesse Alberts. Alright, we're done with the introduction. And today we take you to the country of Turkey. And we will be talking about Turkish nationalism before and during World War II. And now to our correspondents in the field. My name is Jeremy Wade, biologist and extreme angler. At first, Turkey was part of the great Ottoman Empire. However, during the 1800s, this empire began losing large sections of the land and having it conquered by other countries. So, during World War I, the Ottoman Empire joined Germany in hopes of saving the land they had left. However, after their defeat in World War I, the Ottoman Empire underwent many changes. After World War I, the Ottoman Empire lost most of their land, except for the area known as Turkey. In 1919, the Greeks attacked Turkey and hoped to destroy the empire. Well, hello! Well, hi there. Turkish general Mustafa, not to be confused with Mufasa, Kamel, encourages Turkish citizens to fight in the country's defense. In 1922, the Turkish army counterattacked and defeated the Greeks. The defeat of the Greeks led to many changes. The leader of the Ottoman Empire gave up his throne, and the people formed a new republic called the Republic of Turkey as Kamel as the first president. Which is why the Northern Pike truly is a river monster. Kamel was also the leader of a young group called the Young Turks. This group wanted to modernize Turkey. They also wanted to rid the country of all of the Armenian people. By 1915, they had already begun their brutal killings of the Armenian people. During the Armenian Genocide, thousands of Armenian people were forced out of their homes and forced to march across the Syrian desert. Thousands of them were killed along in the journey. Others were tortured and shot. Right now, I am in Turkey on a mass grave where thousands of Armenians died. Oh, oh my! I don't know what to say about this. By the end of the Armenian Genocide, over 1.5 million people died. During Kamel's presidency, he made many, many reforms, including the adaption of the Western calendar and the metric system. Did he really? He did. And also, since 90% of the Turkish people were illiterate, he also adapted the Latin alphabet. And So awesome! Did you know that Kamel he also let women uh, gave him gave women equal rights? Really? Did yeah. Wow. That's so cool. And guess what? He let before women could only work certain jobs and they had to wear clothes. Wow, that's, that's awful. That's I know. So but now women, after Kamel's reforms, women were allowed to wear Western style clothing and they could work any job they really wanted. No way. That's so cool. Kamel also separated government and religion, promoted Turkish national pride, he introduced tractors to peasants to help them with farming. This guy was just awesome. He uh, th ridded the language of all Arabic and Persian words. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. That was, he also uh, even changed his own name to Kamel Turk, which means father of the Turks. Wow. Kamel changed Turkey from an ancient civilization to a modern one. On November 10th, 1938, Sorry to say this, guys, he passed on. Nationalism played a huge part in Turkey during this time period. However, this nat nationalism was good and bad for the Turkish people. On a positive side, Kamel inspired his people to unite against the Greeks to save his country. On a more negative side, the Turks thought that they were better than anyone else, and they killed over a million Armenians. This Armenian genocide couldn't be compared to the Holocaust in World War II. In both cases, there was a group of people with extreme nationalism that thought they were the best. This led to the killing of millions of people. Thank you for watching Today, Today in History. We'll see you next time.